Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are going to be taking a look at Reshade, what it does and how it can make the simulator look absolutely fantastic. There's also one in particular that we're going to be using today that makes the installation process just as easy and just as great to have and takes the simulator from looking like this to this. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what is Reshade? For those of you who, don't, who may not be aware, Reshade is a post-processing injector. Essentially what it does is it takes the image, after the image has been rendered by the video card, and we see the image in front of us, it then adds different uh, tones, textures, etc., to make the image look a bit more sharper, more clearer, change the color, make it more vibrant, etc. There's a ton of things that you can do with Reshade. It's a very, very... Um, um, feature rich application. Now we're not going to be going through how to create your own things like that today because quite frankly I just don't trust my skill level enough to do so. I haven't messed with Reshade in years. I think the last time I played around with Reshade was years ago in DCS World. Um, however, it does a ton of stuff and it is a very, very nice addition. And it's really interesting with Reshade because at first when you first notice differences, you probably, probably saw in the intro, sometimes the differences look very, very subtle. You're like, ah, oh, that really didn't do that much. But then as you start flying around and you start really looking at different details and start think certain things just start standing out to you and it may not be anything that that's too crazy it may just be something about the color having more depth or something having a little bit more texture look to it you know bringing things uh to life that normally may have been a bit on the dull side and that's more or less what i think that this profile that we're going to be talking about today does so what we're going to do is we're going to go we're going to hop on over to flight sim.2 i'm going to show you guys the uh profile itself and the installation process and then we'll come back and i'm going to sort of walk you guys through how to very very easily uh, use this um, this program. So let's go ahead and hop on over to uh, FlightSim.2. Okay, so here is the profile that we're going to be talking about. It's called Final Light Reshade Preset. And he's really done a great job. And as you can see, um, what he's talking about here and the aim here is realistic colors and tone fixes. So it's not going to be huge adjustments, but it's going to be things that are a little bit easier on the eyes, i got to be honest. Um, and then a uh, just a, a bit more... Some subtle changes and some a bit more dramatic, but when you put the whole picture together and you start looking around, it's really fantastic. So again, the link to this will be down in the description below. The biggest thing that I wanted to walk you guys through today is the installation process, um, as a lot of people find this a bit um, cumbersome when it comes to dealing with reshade. And uh, what uh, Final Light here has done, uh, at least I hope, yep, yeah, good. <laughs> I want to make sure that was actually his name or the developer's name. Um, what they have done is made a very, very simple bat file. Um, bat file can be considered kind of like an executable. It's just a, a, a command file that tells the computer to do X, Y, Z. Okay, so let's go ahead now. I'm going to have you guys just, if you guys feel free to pause the screen, read through this, or jump to the link yourself. Um, if you guys would like to follow along, I do recommend downloading it now. It's very, very easy to disable, so you don't have to worry about reversing any of the effects. We are not going to be changing any of the core folders or files. Um, everything is external to the Microsoft Flight Simulator directory. So I highly recommend you guys follow along with this one and just sort of check it out as we go. All right, so the first thing that we need to do from that website is obviously download the zip file here. And then using whatever your favorite extractor is, we're going to extract that the contents of that folder. And the first thing that we're going to be looking at is this one right here. Now, the developer, uh, Final Light, has done something very, very kind and put a very easy link for us down in the description of that um, Post. So give me a second, and we're going to open that back up for just a moment. And let me get the back the browser back up on mine. There we go. That's what I wanted. Sorry about that. I was hitting the wrong thing. Wasn't sure why that wasn't working. So what we're going to want to copy 
is this right here. Now you do not want the quotes. You just want from C to the end of that slash. That's all we want. And I'm gonna hit Control C here to copy that. Okay, then we're gonna go back to our directory. We're gonna open up a new window here. That's this one here. And you can just shift click on the file explorer and it will open a second window for you. And then up in the address bar, we're gonna paste that link there just like that and just hit enter. Don't do anything else. And it will automatically take us to your user profile that you're currently logged in with. Then what we wanna do, let me move this guy down a little bit for you guys. Oh, it looks like I already had two of them open. Let me go back to our downloads folder. Or oh, not the downloads folder, you want that folder. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm still getting used to OBS with some of this stuff, guys, so forgive me. So we want to copy this folder right here. Just literally right click. Copy, okay? And then we are going to paste it. Oops. Hi. Into this one here. Okay? And you can see I've already done that right here. Okay? That's step one. All right? And then once you've done that, we are done with this window, so we can close this one out. And then we're going to be talking about this one here. And we're going to be grabbing this guy right here. This is that bat file I was telling you. And you're just going to copy it or drag it, however you want to do it. But you're going to put it right onto your desktop. Okay. Um, the desktop shouldn't be crucial unless it's specifically programmed to run from there. But I don't think it is. But I'm just, for sake of following instructions, I am launching it from directly from the desktop. So we take this guy out and put it onto our desktop. Okay, and once you've done that, all you need to do is double click that bat file and the bat file will launch Microsoft Flight Simulator. You do not need to do both. Now, you may need to right click and run as administrator if there's any kind of uh, issue there. So right click the bat file, hit run as administrator, and then just wait for your simulator to launch. Once your simulator launches, load into your aircraft of choice, location of choice. And a good way to know that it's working is to simply, once you get into the flight sim, is to hit the home key. If you get this window here, that means the reshade successfully installed. Now, we're not quite done yet with the installation process, so bear with me here. Next, we're gonna come up here, and actually, I'm gonna disable reshade for just a minute. And uh, what we're gonna do here is gonna go to settings next. And you can see that we have these two directories here, the shaders and the textures. Notice these are coming directly from the reshade injection. Now, what you need to do is you actually need to delete them and then recreate them. So for example, the shaders here, I'm going to remove that. I'm going to then hit the plus sign and I'm just going to re-click on shaders, hit select, do the same thing for the textures. I'm going to remove the line, then add it back, textures, hit select, and then we're going to go back to the home screen here, come right down here. Now this will probably be blank for you right now. None of this, I doubt any of this will be here for you at the moment, but you're going to come down here and hit reload. And now you should be seeing the same thing that I'm seeing here. Okay. And then to, um, you can now hit the home key to get rid of the menu. And by hitting the num pad asterisk key, you should be able to trigger the reshade effect. Notice that the colors are different. And obviously this is going to be, uh, this is going to vary based on what your monitor settings are also set to. That's also going to take some impact here. But when we step into the cockpit, I really notice a big difference. So here's what the shaders on and there's the shaders off. Notice with the shaders off, everything has a much brighter yellow tint to it, almost like a, like a yellow overlay, like a mustardy look to it. And then with the reshade on, everything becomes much more natural colored. Um, some of the dash panels and things like that, or some of the dash panel textures get a little bit more depth. The floorboard gets a bit of the darker color. Things just seem to look a bit more natural, which is exactly what Final Light was looking to do, as he stated in his document. Okay, again, looking out the window there, those bright yellow, there's that mustardy color again, coming back down to reshade on. And the clouds still have that yellow tint that you'd expect from the sun, but have a bit more natural look to it. The mountains, I notice a huge difference. Like this is very, very, I mean, I've been looking at these mountains for 
38 years. And this is much more accurate with the reshade on. Um, so anyway, guys, and there's a ton of things that you can do with these. Let me see if I can, I'll tell you what, let me walk through this real quick here and see if I'm even remotely comfortable in messing around with this. Um, Oh, you actually get tutorials in here. There's dark effects that you can change. Yeah, I'd have to go back and through it. So you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to to do that because I just don't trust myself enough to uh, tell you guys correctly. So um, the one thing I do want to check with you guys though is we're gonna take a look at what the frame rate hit looks like. So let's go ahead and close this window. Hit that home key there. And let's go back to our general options here and let's go to our developers mode, turn developer mode on, apply and save. We're going to go to tools. Is it tools? Options. Options. There it is. And even the menus look better. Like the whole thing looks nicer. Like for example, reshade off, reshade on. Like even the menu for me looks better. And let's see if there's any kind of frame rate hit. So jumping back into the seat here, looking around. Rocking 40s, 30s, depends on where we're looking. Reshade off. On. Off. On. So no real FPS hit either. It's very, very nice, very, very easily handled. Um, I am super impressed with it. And these kind of little things, again, it, it, it's, 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 it's cookie crumbs, right? Until you make that whole cookie. Whoops. I don't know what I just did. I think I hit the space bar. Um, those cookie crumbs that slowly start bringing things together. So between this and maybe altering a bit more of the textures inside the sim, and then maybe adjusting some colors on your monitor, you can really get a very, very beautiful picture. I am thoroughly impressed with this preset. I think it's very, very subtle and yet does a ton for being so subtle. Um, it really enhanced a lot. You know, one of my biggest things is, has always been that, like I said, that mustardy yellow and then the very high blues. They're the very powerful blues. And there are certain times, don't get me wrong, where those colors absolutely apply. I'm not trying to discredit a Sobo and the graphics. You know, I've said it in a thousand videos at this point, probably by now that uh, they've done, you know, what Microsoft, where Microsoft Flight Simulator dominates is the graphics and the scenery. So please don't take that as discredit. But again, when you have these developers like Final Light here who are taking the time to put this kind of stuff together uh it just it's another piece that adds a ton um and i i really enjoy it yeah i i didn't realize how subtle of a difference how huge of a difference a subtle change can make i mean that the cloud has really changed a lot for me and and the sky has has always been a big point of contention now for testing sake let's go ahead and take a look at some different weather settings here uh, we are not in live weather right now because right now there's nothing over Tucson. We have absolutely completely clear skies right now, which is crazy because yesterday it was about as dark as dark could be. Um, so let's see here. There we go. There's scattered clouds. And let's step outside and let's go high. Let's get a let's get a bird's eye view over the city here. There we go. I think that'll work right. Okay, so again. There's off, on. And what I'm watching for is even look at like some of the rooftops up over here. Many things get much more definition. Didn't mean to hit that. And let's try, let's see here. Let's, let's keep going here. What about high level? So that's off and there's on. I, I think it's gorgeous. Let's change the time of day a little bit. There you go. So there's, there's the nice hot part of the day in Tucson and that should be off. Yep. And on. I mean, I can tell you, I keep hitting that. It's cause I got my pinky on the same button. So even the time of day, um, like this is easier on the eyes.
Um, if you notice, I tend to fly either very early morning as far as my, my game time settings and very um, late in the evening. And that's because the afternoons tend to be honestly hard on my eyes. You know, that, that yellow light when you're staring at it for a while, it really starts to hurt after a bit. Um, where this just looks far more natural. Let's um, do one more. And let's kick it into some craziness, shall we? Actually, maybe we'll do two more. Let's do uh, let's do a storm. I don't know how much difference that's going to make. Well, there you go. That's off. And there's on. Sort of waiting for the next lightning strike. There we go. And maybe we'll do two more. Hang on a second. Let's do also, uh, let's do an overcast. There we go. That'd be better. So again, that's off, definitely. Yep. And there's on. It's so much nicer, guys. I really hope that the recording is doing it justice. And one final one, because I know it's that time of year, is we're going to check out snow. Snow tends to be one that tends to be really painful in the eyes. Ugh, as I was saying. Okay, and this is with it on. I don't know why the rainbow is there. That just sort of doesn't make sense. Let me come down a little bit. Let's turn away from that. Oh, yeah, see? And there's that yellow tint. So that's off and on. Off, on. So anyway, folks, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I hope that you guys uh, absolutely dive into this. I think I'm going to start playing around with some reshade settings myself. I need to remember how to do it. Um, but uh, And then maybe, you know, if I make one that I like, maybe I'll share it with community. But to Final Light, thank you very much for all of your efforts. It absolutely changed the way the sim looks. Um, I can feel the difference, as I said, on my eyes. And, that, and that's, that's a huge gain for me. Um, I stare at computers all day long because of my job. So anything that helps that process is a big help to me specifically. So... Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. As always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.